Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying class 12 biology chapter human reproduction. So in this particular lesson, we are going to study in detail about the process of lactation. So this lactation involves actually two different steps. The first one is the production and secretion of the milk and the second one is the ejection of the milk. So the first, the mammary gland secrete and produce the milk. Second, it ejects the milk. So these two steps are together called as lactation. So lactation is not a single phenomenon. It involves two different mechanisms. Fine. So what is lactation? What is the definition for the word lactation? Lactation is the production of the milk by the mammary glands. So mammary glands of the female, it starts producing the milk immediately after the childbirth by the process of lactation. So here, the formation and secretion of the milk from the alveoli of the mammary gland, it starts from the end of the pregnancy period itself. That means the ejection of the milk occurs after parturition. That means after the baby is getting delivered. But the production of the milk, the process of uh, preparing the alveoli cells, alveolar of the mammary glands to produce the milk. So all such thing occurs when the female is in her pregnancy stage itself. Okay. The formation and secretion of the milk from the alveoli of the mammary gland starts from the end of the pregnancy period itself. Okay. But the ejection or the flow of the milk starts after the childbirth only. Because the baby has to suck the nipple and there involves an another let down reflex. So because of that reflex mechanism only the ejection of the milk occurs. Okay. So this lactation is actually a complex neuroendocrine process. What do you mean by neuroendocrine process? There involves the involvement of the brain. That means the nervous system is involved in that. Endocrine gland is involved in that. So like that it is a very complex neuroendocrine process so first let us see how the milk is produced and secreted the alveoli of the mammary gland contains epithelial cells which secrete the milk so previously we have studied in detail about the structure and functions of the mammary gland okay now let us see this thing in a short so in the mammary gland, a particular region called alveoli. This is the alveoli. So exactly where it is present. So look at this picture at your left. These grape-like structure, they are called lobules. Okay. So this lobules contains many alveoli. This is alveoli. So when we see a cross section of the alveoli, we could see a layer of cells arranged like this so these cells are called as epithelial cells these epithelial cells are responsible for the milk secretion so epithelial cells of the alveoli secrete the milk okay so here in human we have two in two places we have alveoli one in our lungs and one in the mammary glands so when we talk about this we should say like the alveoli of the mammary glands Okay, the alveoli of the mammary glands contains the epithelial cells which secrete the milk. Okay, so see here, these epithelial cells, when they secrete the milk, all this milk are secreted and released out in this area. Okay, so in this canal. And those things are getting uh, collected and they come to the area called milk duct okay so if we see in this picture here all these lobules contain the alveoli which secretes the milk they all gets collected and stored here in the milk duct in this region so whenever the baby sucks so this milk which is stored in this milk duct it gets released out so this is how the milk secretion and ejection happens. So here basically what we have to understand is the epithelial cells of the alveoli of the mammary gland secretes the milk. Okay. And for this an important hormone called prolactin. Prolactin is the very very important thing. Prolactin hormone stimulates the alveoli of the mammary glands. So who is secreting prolactin? 
the hypothalamus gives signals to the posterior pituitary the pituitary secretes the hormone prolactin so this prolactin comes and acts on this alveoli it gives signals to this epithelial cells of the alveoli to secrete the milk okay so here when we study about the lactation we have to understand when this process starts we know that lactation starts immediately after parturition right now there arises a question how immediately after parturition only the milk secretion occurs why not during the pregnancy it happens right so the reason for that is a two hormones called progesterone and estrogen so we know that progesterone is the pregnancy hormone during pregnancy that too in the third trimester of the pregnancy a woman will have high levels of estrogen and progesterone so look at this picture when she is pregnant in her first trimester estrogen and progesterone are produced in her tri second trimester the uh, level of the hormone is high and during the third trimester it is in the peak level okay so this progesterone is a very important hormone for the uh, parturition also and it is important throughout the pregnancy so the estrogen and progesterone are in its peak during the pregnancy period so what happens during the uh, pregnancy time itself this progesterone influences the growth in the size of the alveoli and lobes and estrogen stimulates the milk duct system to grow and differentiate so what is the meaning for that though the milk gets eject after the parturition the milk production starts during the pregnancy period itself that means when a woman is in her fifth or sixth month of pregnancy in that time itself her mammary glands all her alveoli they are well developed they are get they get ready for the milk secretion okay so those things are induced by the hormone progesterone then what happened after delivery suddenly the level of the estrogen and progesterone is reduced highly okay so when the estrogen and progesterone level is decreased and another hormone called prolactin is induced so when prolactin is induced when estrogen when estrogen and progesterone level is decreased okay that time what happened prolactin is increased okay fine so prolactin is the hormone which stimulates the milk secretion but the level of the prolactin is stimulated when the estrogen and progesterone levels are low so when this will occur this will occur immediately after parturition so look here when parturition occurs immediately after parturition the level of the estrogen and progesterone is decreased highly okay here arises an important question how the level of estrogen and progesterone is decreased suddenly after delivery right so that is because progesterone is produced by placenta so we know that during delivery when the baby is expelled out after the baby released out uh, delivered the next step is the placenta gets out okay so here the placenta is the organ temporary organ which produce high amount of progesterone hormone during pregnancy because it was needed for the uh, baby growth and for everything okay so now everything is finished baby is delivered so placenta is not no more needed so it gets released out so when the placenta is lost what happened progesterone decrease suddenly so this low level of progesterone and estrogen stimulates the anterior lobe of the pituitary to secrete the hormone prolactin right so now what happens this prolactin they stimulate the epithelium cells of the mammary gland to secrete the milk so this process is called lactogenesis okay right so let us understand this with this picture so after delivery here after delivery what happens the level of the progesterone and estrogen is decreased okay this low level of estrogen and progesterone stimulates stimulates or where they stimulates the hypothalamus then hypothalamus induces the anterior pituitary to secrete the hormone prolactin 
so this prolactin hormone which mixes with the blood and comes straightly to the mother's alveoli and it induces the epithelial cells to start the milk secretion okay so this process is called lactogenesis here the secretion of the milk involves two different things the first one is lactogenesis and second one is called galactopoiesis what is galactopoiesis galactopoiesis is the maintenance of lactation once the lactation has been established that means the milk production has started it has to maintain no so that maintenance of the milk production is called as galactopoiesis okay so this is carried out by several hormones like growth hormones oxytocin cortisol and thyroxin so many hormones are involved in the process of galactopoiesis fine so here the female is ready to produce the milk during the fifth or the sixth month of her pregnancy itself that means milk production for her uh, breast to produce the milk the breast or the alveolar cells all this gets ready to produce the milk during her fifth or sixth months of pregnancy period itself okay but during the later stage of pregnancy only the female enters the first step of the lactogenesis okay right now the second process that is the milk ejection now the milk has been secreted and produced now the second thing is it has to be ejected out so how this ejection will be done this is under the control of an another hormone called oxytocin so oxytocin is an important hormone in the ejection of milk we know oxytocin is an important hormone for the parturition right pregnancy uh, after pregnancy delivery to deliver the baby oxytocin is important because it does the contraction of the uterus the same oxytocin here is also important for the milk ejection because the main role of oxytocin is to contract the muscles okay so it undergoes a process called let down reflex so what is this this is the ejection of the milk from the alveoli of the mammary glands so what happens when the oxytocin is released it goes straightly to the muscles of the mammary gland it squeezes the muscles so whatever milk produced by the epithelial cells it will be let out okay so this milk ejection occurs because of a hormone called oxytocin but here we should remember that this milk ejection starts very slowly not immediately after the parturition that means once the baby is delivered not immediately the milk will be in a high flow this milk uh, ejection will occur slowly slowly okay and it get progressed once the baby start to suck more and more okay right? so what causes the milk to eject out from the mammary gland so two important things are involved in this the first one is the suckling of the nipple the sensory cells are present in that uh, area of the nipple in the areola region okay so once this nipples are suckled it will be stimulated so this stimulus goes to the brain and the brain secretes the hormone oxytocin this oxytocin causes the ejection of the milk okay and another important thing is when the baby starts to cry the emotion of the uh, baby the cry when the mother hears the cry of the baby that emotion itself is enough to start to secrete the oxytocin okay right so two important things are involved in the oxytocin secretion number one is the mechanical or the physical suckling of the nipple region and second one is the just the cry of the baby is enough which creates an emotional thing which induces the oxytocin secretion so that's why we call this milk ejection or the lactation process is a neuroendocrine reflex let us understand how this let down reflex mechanism works using this picture okay so see first after parturition when the baby starts to suck the nipple the signals from the tactile receptors tactile receptors are the very uh, soft sensory receptors present in the nipple region okay so these receptors send signal to the brain where in the hypothalamus they give signals to the hypothalamus of the mother so the hypothalamus receives the signal and it sends an another signal to the anterior pituitary 
to secrete a hormone called prolactin. This prolactin hormone whichever is released this is the first hormone for the milk production. It gets mixed with the blood and comes straightly to the breast region. That means it comes to the alveolar cells and it induces the epithelial cells of the alveoli of the mammary gland to start secreting the milk production. Okay, so this is the first thing happens. Simultaneously what happens when the baby sucks due to the suckling reflex this signals goes again to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sends another signal to the posterior pituitary. Posterior pituitary secretes the second hormone oxytocin. So again this oxytocin is the second hormone which gets released and mixed with the blood and it comes straightly to the myoepithelial cells of the alveoli. It, it starts the contraction of the alveoli. So as a result of that the whatever milk is produced it gets ejected out. Okay. So this is called let down reflex. So in this let down reflex two things happen simultaneously. The first one is the production of the hormone prolactin which is needed for the milk production and second one the production of the hormone oxytocin which is needed for the milk ejection. These two hormones will be involved in this process together. Okay. So this is called let down reflex. Right. So when we study about lactation we have to understand an another important thing called colostrum. What is colostrum? The milk produced during the initial few days of lactation is called colostrum. That means immediately after delivery the first few days say about until the third day or fourth day the first milk produced is called as colostrum. This milk is highly yellow in color. It is highly yellow in color and is, is a sticky fluid. Okay. So what is the composition of colostrum? The colostrum contains high level of casein. Casein is the milk protein and it has less lactose. That means it has less carbohydrates. Milk sugar lactose is present in a less quantity and also similarly fat. Fat is also present in less amount and colostrum contains vitamin A minerals and particularly it is rich in the immunoglobulin IgA okay so we know immunoglobulins are of five types IgG A M D E okay so out of this this immunoglobulin IgA this is called secretory immunoglobulin secretory immunoglobulin okay so what is secretory immunoglobulin because this is secreted along with the breast milk okay so this is also called as SIGA. So this immunoglobulin IgA is present in high amount in the colostrum. Okay. So look at this picture. We could appreciate the color variation in the milk in different days. Okay. See after delivery the three days initially the color of the milk is golden yellow in color. Okay. This is the colostrum. Why this is yellow in color? Because this has high level of beta carotene beta carotene is a pigment you know we eat a carrot right so the color of the carrot is orangish like this because of the carotene pigment so similarly this colostrum has high amount of beta carotene so why this beta carotene is needed because this is a precursor of vitamin a okay so vitamin a is produced using the beta carotene only so when the baby is born this vitamin a is essential to maintain the immunity skin eyesight so for all many uh, functions vitamin a is needed so to produce the vitamin a beta carotene is essential which is provided by the first secreted milk colostrum okay and you see later on the fifth day on the sixth day and 25th day the color of the milk slowly slowly it gets diluted and the color the beta carotene level is reduced and it uh, becomes white color fine okay so what is the use of the colostrum why colostrum is very essential for a baby because antibodies iga is present high amount in the colostrum so this antibody helps in developing resistance for the newborn baby for the first step because when the baby is born 
just a newborn the immune system is not much developed not at all developed actually speaking okay so it needs some protection against pathogens because the baby is now newly exposed to the external environment so this immunoglobulin a whichever is released out by the mother's milk this gives protection for the baby against any pathogen okay and it also protects the infant digestive tract against any bacterial infection so it protects the baby's digestive system so that the baby will not get diarrhea or any abdominal discomfort like that so it protects the infant digestive tract against the bacterial infection colostrum is loaded with high amount of immunity that means ig antibodies are there and it is important for the growth and tissue repair factors for the baby right so let us see what is the composition of the normal milk that means the breast milk okay so the breast milk contains high amount of water the milk protein that is casein carbohydrates milk sugar is called lactose lactose is present and fat fat is present in the form of fat droplets or oil droplets in the breast milk not only that many mineral salts such as sodium calcium potassium phosphorus like these mineral salts are present in the breast milk and vitamins so if you see when we talk about a complete diet or a balanced diet we used to say we must take carbohydrates fats vitamins minerals in in a balanced amount right for a healthy living so such a balanced diet is the naturally available breast milk this is a complete balanced food this is a complete balanced food. okay so not only that the breast milk also contains many good bacteria such as bifidobacterium lactobacillus staphylococcus ralstonia bacteroids clostridium micrococcus enterococcus like this these different genus of bacteria are present naturally in the mother's milk so why this bacteria are present because you know in our body naturally we have many normal bacteria which is called as normal flora or common salts normal flora or common salts so what are they these are the good bacteria which are essential for our body to maintain um, good digestion and they produces many uh, vitamin a vitamin k in the intestine so like this normal flora has many function in our body okay so this normal flora is initially provided to the baby through the mother's milk so they go and settle in the alimentary canal in the digestive system of the baby okay so that's why the baby will not get any infection because this normal flora fight with the pathogenic bacteria they won't allow any pathogenic bacteria to come and cause infection in the digestive tract okay so in this particularly a bacteria called bifidobacterium this bacteria is present only in the human milk even the cow's milk will not contain bifidobacteria okay so that's why human milk is very very important for the newborn baby right so we should know why mother's milk is safest for the newborn baby because breast milk is the ideal food for the infant because it contains all the constituents in a balanced amount so no need to give honey sugar or water for the baby till at least 6 months because all the thing whatever is needed for the baby's growth nutrition is provided is present in the mother's milk okay so it is fully sufficient till about 6 months of the age okay fine and no artificial feed can substitute the first milk that is colostrum no artificial component can substitute because colostrum naturally contains immunoglobulin naturally contains many minerals naturally contains the bacteria okay so no artificial powdered milk can substitute a mother's milk right so that's why by understanding the importance of the mother's milk every year the august first week that means the first to seventh august is celebrated as world breastfeeding week right so not only that when a mother gives breastfeed to the baby so during lactation what happens this oxytocin stimulates the recently emptied uterus to contract helping it to return to the pre pregnancy stage so we know that the hormone oxytocin is essential for the contractions right so when the mother is giving breastfeeding after delivery the size of the uterus will be enlarged right so this oxytocin 
again helps to contract the uterus so that the uterus come back to its original size so for this also the breast feeding is essential for a mother to regain her original size of the uterus right so i hope you understand this lecture and if you like this lecture don't forget to subscribe to our channel need biology expert thank you